بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم Okay, this is my first attempt to, to present a lecture on symmetry method. It is symmetry method 2, lecture 9. We will try to solve some nonlinear PDEs in this lecture. In fact, it is this lecture is a mapping between uh, one system and the other one we will solve the difficult system with the help of, uh, of uh, easy system using symmetries of the systems so let's start These are the outlines of my talk. First, we will introduce what is symmetry, and uh, then we will proceed uh, to the algorithm which map system of differential equation on system of differential equations. There are two theorems on. Uh, and, uh, and the mapping of differential equations and then uh, we will give some example one is non invertible mapping and the other one is invertible point transformations and then I will give some references for from where I take help and prepare this talk in fact in this lecture we are trying to solve differential equations and most probably partial system of partial differential equations you know that the symmetry method start in 19th century with an Aryan mathematician so firstly he tried to solve differential equation using symmetry method and he succeeded he, he discovered a powerful method to solve differential equation of any kind mean differential equation maybe linear nonlinear partial differential equation ordinary differential equation all types of differential equation can be deal with the least symmetry method if they admit symmetries let's see uh, very simple example of differential equation which is given in equation 2.1 you know it is very simple differential equation but we want to clear concept about uh, a symmetry of a differential equations so that is why we take this simple differential equation differential the simple differential equation so uh, let's see some symmetries of this differential equation we have these three three symmetries which are given in equation 2.2 2.3 and 2.4 the symmetry 2.3 is simply a reflection in the xy plane the symmetry map y equal to c to the solution y equal to minus c the symmetry psi 2 given in equation 
is a translation in x axis and the symmetry psi 3 given in equation 2.4 is translation along y axis the corresponding generators are given as x2 and x3 we see that all the given symmetries that is psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 are symmetries of the differential equation 2.1 psi 1 map every solution on a different solution except y equal to 0 this symmetry map y0 on y0 all other solution is map on minus y uh, minus c c map on minus c but y0 is map on 0 also this symmetry does not depend on a continuous parameter epsilon it is it is only a reflection the other two symmetries psi 2 and psi 3 both depend on continuous parameter epsilon psi 2 map solution on itself and psi 3 solution on different solutions and we interested on Summaries of differential equation like psi 3 which map solution on different solutions All we we all know that how the symmetry can be calculated a symmetry generator x when operate on a function f equal to 0 mean the function f is invariant under that operator so the function is an invariant function under a given symmetry generator similarly if we have first order differential equation then we have first prolongation x1 and the first order differential equation will be invariant under that operator similarly for second order differential equation we prolong the generator two times we need second prolongation x2 operate on f of x y y dash and y, dash, y double dash equal to 0 now we uh, will talk about an algorithm which read partial differential equations to partial differential equations here are some notations we will uh, take a system rxo system of differential equation rxo with n independent variable and m dependent variable gx capital gx will denote group up at group up all admitted continuous transformation capital LX is the correspondingly algebra small GX is the subgroup of the capital GX small LX is the Lie algebra of the small GX TGX a function of epsilon a one parameter subgroup given by equation 3.1 this transformation is a continuous transformation and is a, in a, a Lie group the corresponding infinitesimal generator is given in equation 2.3 where x i i are function of x and u eta v is a function of x and u for a target system of differential equation we use s 
zw with n independent variable z1 z2 zn and m independent variable w1 w2 wm gz is a all admitted continuous transformation group of all admitted continuous transformation Capital LZ is the corresponding real algebra. Small GZ is a subgroup of the capital GZ. Small LZ is a real algebra of small GZ. And the TGZ function of epsilon is a one parameter group given in equation 3.3. The corresponding infinitesimal generator is given in 3.4. Chi 1 and lambda nu are defined in equation 3.3. Note that the transformation given in 3.1 and 3.3 are the most general form of transformation this is the most general form of the Lie transformation it contain the Lie point symmetry contact symmetry and book learned symmetries Okay, now we are interested in mapping of the two system. That is mapping from mapping from R to S. R is a given system, and S is a target system. And we are searching. We are searching a mapping mu which is given in two point in three point five. Z is a function of x u u1 up to u l w is psi x u u1 to u l where l is a order of the derivative of u m m l is a class of all such mapping given in 3.5 which depend on at most the lth partial derivative of u for any solution u the mapping mu given by 3.5 determines solution w so our system our given system u will be easier one uh, R will be easier one and the target set system S will be um, harder one. So if we have a relation like relation like 3.5 between W and U between W and U and we if we have we know U then we will insert you here and we will find w which is solution of the tar target differential equation okay this is the uh, some notation given in uh, 3.6 there is there is uh, a group action on the x u on the x u um, space group action is given in this equation and a mapping between the x u coordinates and z w coordinate is given in this equation And hence we ha we have a composition of the mu and the t. The mapping mu and the uh, group action 
this is the composition of the group action first the group action is applied on x u which become from x to x star from u to u star and then action of the mu which convert x n u into z and w which is equal to phi z is equal to phi and w is equal to psi defined in the previous equation uh, 3.5 you see z is phi and w is psi so this is the composition of the two mapping one is the group action and the other is the mapping mu okay uh, here is uh, the same thing but this is now this group action is in the target this group action is in the target space with compose with the mu so first you will apply mu that will convert x and u into z and w and then you will apply the group action there in the target space which from which you will get z w and w, uh, z star and w star and z star and w star are the transformation given in 3 z star and w star is transformation given in uh, i think 3 3 yes this is the transformation 3 3 so we will equate this equation this composition 3.7 and 3.8 which which are give which are given over here chi chi z w w1 w k will become chi z goes to phi is a mapping so w goes to psi w1 goes to psi1 and so on similarly lambda z w w1 w k will go to lambda phi psi psi ones and phi with phi and psi phi and psi are defined in 3.5 3.5 yes over here okay and and the derivative of psi is this this is the j derivative j derivative of psi so equating the order epsilon terms of equation 37 and 38 we obtain so what is the main the main uh, the main techniques we equate equation 3.7 and 3.8 so explicitly they implies this 3.9 and 3.10 so this is this is the mapping we need uh, to map the given system on the target st system we will see it is it is hard to to understand here but we will see that it is not so hard when we take examples on this stuff on this on this concept so in more compact form these two equation can be written in this like these equation you see, you see in 3. Point, uh, in 3.1 this is the more compact form 
more compact form of the 3.9 and 3.10 where Excel is the Lth order prolongation in the space X and U coordinate and Z is the extended generator given in equation 3.4 in the ZW ZW so let's see 3.4 this Z is defined. This Z is defined in 3.4. It is the generator in the target space. 3.4. Yes, over here. This is Z. So this is the mapping between the between the given space and the target space. And the whole game is behind the symmetry generator. These are the symmetry generator in the in the given space, and Z is the symmetry generator in the target space. So all we need the symmetries admitted by the given the given system of differential equation, which will be zero one. And this Z is the symmetry generator of the target space so we find the symmetries and put over here we will get a system of partial differential equations we will solve that partial differential equations and we will get uh, the mapping between the coordinates of the given system and the target system Invertible mapping, there are uh, theorems on invertible mapping. So we have two theorems on invertible mapping. The first one is this when there is only one dependent variable, one dependent variable, then we have a mapping given in equation 3.12. Z is a function of x u and u1 w is a function of x u and u1 and w1 which is der derivative of, of w with respect to z is psi1 which is a function of x u and u1 this theorem is due to book learn note that phi and psi are independent of u1 so there is a mistake in this lecture in this equation there is no u1 this u1 is not here z is a function of x and u w is a function of x and u there is no u1 this u1 is extra so this is a mistake <clears throat> only w1 depend on u1 theorem 2 Uh, when we have more and de more dependent variable not one dependent variable in that case our mapping will become this one z is a phi of x u and w is a psi of x u this is a mapping only in the coordinate not in the derivative so the difference between the, the two theorem is here the derivative is involved first derivative is involved but in the second case the first derivative is not involved the mu is defined like this one we need that the mapping in the derivative and we doesn't need the derivative we only need mapping between this the spaces 
This theorem is due to Moller and Maschert. Now, there, there may be, there are two types of mapping. One is the non-invertible mapping and the second is invertible mapping. So where the mu, mu where where is the mu non-invertible and where it is invertible? The question. The invertible the non-invertible mapping occur where the summit the number of symmetries of the given system is not equal to the number of symmetries of the target system. And mu will be invertible if the symmetries of the given system and the target system are the same so we example we give example for each one here is construction of non-invertible mapping and for this purpose we have heat equation and burger equation heat equation is a linear equation but Berger equation is I think it is non-linear yes it is non-linear so we will find this mapping the mapping given in 3.14 this is a hope call transformation and we are interested to find it explicitly by ourselves how this is how this uh, transformation define so we take heat equations which is given in 3.15 and Berger equation which are given in 3.16 and find the least symmetries of the this equation and the Berger equation. So let's see their symmetries. These are symmetries of the heat equations 3.17. This system contains all the symmetry generator admitted by the heat equations. These are six in number while the Berger equation admit 5 5 Lee symmetries but what is what is common in them you see x1 is like z1 x2 is like z2 x3 is like z3 in the independent in the independent variable you see the action of the independent variable is here action of the independent variable is here so this is the same action of independent variable independent variable action here and here are the same the difference is only the in the dependent variable so the group action of both the sets are the same in the independent space but they are different in the dependent space because uh, this is the symmetry is in the dependent space but I have no symmetry is in the dependent space. This part is in the dependent but you see this is different from this one. So that means the group action in the depend independent space are the same for both the equation, whether it is heat equation or Berger equations. But the group action in the dependent space is different for both. And we will take that as a basis for our mapping we put x x we consider we not put equal to 0 because it's not 0 but we assume it that s6 uh, there is no s x6 so that we left with the 
with the five least symmetries uh, here and here and there can be defined a mapping between them okay so now we take a z6 which correspond to s x6 but we are not taking x6 as a as given in equation 3.17 in this one we are taking it we assume that it is zero so they define that the mapping can be defined here now we have these commutation relation you all know what is commutators and this is the commutator this is in the given space and this is in the target space the why we are uh, say that the, the the structure constant are the same for both uh, the given space and the target space because the action of the group in the independent space are the same so that is an observation also we can we can calculate these crystal uh, these uh, structure constant if they are the same then we can proceed so on the basis of the structure constant we have the same structure constant then we can proceed toward the mapping mu we can define a mapping there exists a mapping between the two spaces the common group action on the independent variable space and the fact that the transformation must be non invertible indicate that the simplest mu a transformation mu which map 3.14 to 3.15 mean the heat equation on the Berger equation so we see from the observation that the group action among the independent coordinate are the same so we leave that as it is z1 goes to x1 and z2 goes to x2 and why we are taking this this is clear from here that the group the group this is the symmetry generator is the same as this one this is the same as this one the first two parts are the same as the first two parts which is the action of the independent variable similarly this first two parts is the same of these first two parts and this symmetry part is, is exactly the same so the group action in this independent space is the same so that is why we are taking this like z1 is equal to x1 and z2 goes to x2 but the goal is to find this thing and for this we will use the mapping okay it is seen in the previous slides that for the mapping we need prolongation let's see it again you see this is a prolongation so we need the prolongation on the one side and no prolongation on the other side so we prolong these generators so we need prolongation over here and I think first prolongation so that is why we we find the first prolongation of all the generators in the given space 
<clears throat> and we leave the second and where this system come from this system come from the mapping given uh, here it is yes here this come from here we use this equation 3.11 r 3.9 and 3.10 this equation for the for the given heat and burger equations give me the system now my goal is to solve this 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 system my goal is to solve this system this is a system of let c1 1 2 3 4 5 these are five equation five pds and we have to solve this these pds for what for this thing we, we need this equation so if we define this equation then we know the mapping between this the the old and the new space mean the given and the target space so let's start solving this system what these two equation tell us these two equation tell us that psi is independent of x1 and x2 it only depend on u and its derivatives so putting that in permission in the given system with the system reduced to this one and this last equation tell me that psi is only depend on u1 not on u2 now putting this information above in these three equation we can get this solution students are advised to 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 do a little bit effort here put this function only a function of u and u1 so this term is zero this term is zero this term is zero so you left with two term here two term here and two term here and from that you can easily find that psi is in fact uh, this function so now we succeed in finding a mapping between the target and the given system this is the mapping which is called the hope cold transformation so why we find it we find it for some purpose and what is the purpose the purpose is uh, to solve the burger equation because the burger equation is non linear and we can solve the heat equation heat equation is linear and it is easy to solve so finding you finding you put over here the derivative of u with respect to x1 and u here i will get w but what is w in fact w is the solution of the burger equation so so solution of the heat equation give me solution of the burger equation so the whole game is that we solve a non linear pde with the help of linear pde and how it how it happened it happened because of the mapping between the spaces and how the mapping is defined uh, the mapping is defined because of the symmetries of the given differential equation and the target so the whole goal is to solve the burger equation here is invertible transformation 
Zalmiz find this transformation. For what? We have cylindrical KDV equation and KDV equation. So this is KDV equation and this is a cylindrical KDV equation. So I think this one there is a one extra term over here. This is non-homogeneous. So we will take a mapping between the cylindrical KDV equation and the KDV equation and we will find uh, we will find a mapping and that mapping will ultimately give us solution to the KDV equation. This one. So let's start. I will go through this because this, this this calculation and the previous calculation are the same. These are uh, the symmetries. Four symmetries of the cylindrical KDV equation. These are uh, four equation, uh, four sum, uh, symmetry generator of the KDV equations. So the number of symmetries of the cylindrical KDV equation and the KDV equation are equal. So they are there is a mapping you see in this equation uh, 3.31 we are interested in this this sort of transformation so let's see okay the mapping between the symmetries and the symmetries give me this system this system in fact three our procedure in our procedure is in three point uh, three point in one one so that give me this system this is system of pdes we will solve this system of pdes and the solution of this system give us the required trans uh, mu the transformation which relate the spaces the new and the old spaces so uh, one of them is soluble either the given space is soluble or the target space is soluble so one is soluble the other is, is difficult to solve so with the help of the solution given and the mapping given we will find the solution so the whole game is to solve this system. So I'm not going into detail. You have to solve that. All sort of something is discussed over here. Your efforts are required in this case. So I'm going toward the solution of this system. See, this is the solution of the system. This is the solution of the system. And in fact, I'm interested in W. Because I can find you, I will find you. I will find you, put over here, I will find W. W is the solution of the KDV equation. Alternately, if I find W, I will find you. Which one is easy? I will solve that, put over here, I will get the solution of the harder one. So the whole game, behind this lecture is to solve harder equation with the help of with the help of easier equation so we take easier equation summities of the easier equation we take the harder equation and summities of the harder equation define a mapping between the symmetry generators and so we get a system of differential equations we solve that differential uh, system of differential equation find the mapping like uh, give, uh, mapping given over here and relate this, um, the give, given space and the target space and find solution of the harder equations. So I think uh, 
you all have to go through these slides and uh, learn what uh, we did here in simple words what we we learn here we have two system of PDEs one is the given the other is the target one and in our cases the given is a simple one which can be solved and the target PDE is the harder one so we find a mapping between the spaces the given spaces and the target spaces we solve we get a relation between the given spaces and the target spaces we we solve the we can solve that given space solution in the given space will be put in the relation obtained and solution of the target system is obtained by this way these are the references i used in uh, making my talk and thank you this is my first lecture so there will be some ambiguities we will try to to to, to overcome all the all the difficulties and uh, we'll try our best to give um, good knowledge from home thank you again if you have any question then you can contact me